All those families that today shine according to their brilliant lineages had low and obscure beginnings. Juan de Mariana, La Dignidad Real y la Educación del Rey. Hello and welcome back again. Sancho is stubborn. He continues to fantasize about enriching Teresa's daughter. I'll put her on a pedestal and under a canopy for you and up in a drawing room with more velvet shams than there were moors in the line of the almohashams of Morocco. The pun here is on the word almohadas, meaning pillows, but Sancho's error alludes to the Moorish almohades who conquered Andalusia in the 12th century. Note also how the presence of Moors complicates the issue of lineage. Racial identity is also highlighted by Sancho's allusion to Fernando de Rojas's La Celestina, which revolves around the prohibitions against marriage between old Christians and Jewish conversos. When Sancho says that his wife is being unreasonable, as if he were asking that Sanchica throw herself from a tower, he refers to the suicide of Melibea in Rojas's novel. Did you know? There are three important dates with respect to the Moorish presence in Spain. In 711, the Moors invaded the Iberian Peninsula. In 1492, the Catholic kings concluded the reconquest by retaking the Kingdom of Granada. Between 1609 and 1614, Philip III expelled the Moriscos, who were Christians of Moorish descent. Still trying to convince his wife to let Sanchica marry above her station, Sancho now deploys a sophisticated philosophical argument, which again causes the narrator to cite the translator's skepticism. Sancho becomes a Neoplatonist, arguing that what a person becomes in life trumps what she might have been in the past. All things which are present before our eyes appear, are, and remain in our memory much more clearly and powerful than things in the past. This gives rise to the fact that when we see a person who is well-dressed and with fine vestments and with a train of servants, it seems that some force moves and induces us to have respect for him, even though in that instant our memory recalls for us some lowliness in which we once saw that person. And that disgrace, whether it be of poverty or lineage, since it is in the past, is no longer and what exists is only that which we see before us in the present. This complex discourse on what defines a person's identity from a man who mispronounces persona as persona. Note that Sancho's moral point is that one's racial heritage should not matter. Only envious people care about lineage and who can avoid being envied. What social criticism can one infer from the conversation between Sancho Panza and his wife Teresa? A, the social importance of poverty. B, the insignificance of racial heritage. C, the abnormality of religious belief. Correct answer, B, the insignificance of racial heritage. The chapter concludes comically and ironically. Sage Sancho now corrects his wife's pronunciation. Then sounding corrupt again and alluding to Spain's fiscal problems under the Habsburgs, he promises to send money as soon as he's a governor. I'll send you money, which I will have plenty of because governors always have someone to lend it to them when they don't have any. When Teresa erupts in tears, saying that the day she sees her daughter become a countess will be the day her daughter dies, the narrator reports Sancho's absurdly stubborn response. Sancho consoled her by saying that even though he had to make her a countess, he would wait as long as possible to do it. Teresa surrenders, but her last comment contains a feminist jab. We women are born with the obligation to obey our husbands even if they are idiots. This is all ridiculous, of course, but both parents are counting their olives and they don't even have an orchard. That's all for now. We'll see each other in our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.